Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on PLOS TV. Revenue generating agencies fail to remit 4.1 trillion naira is the headline we're dealing with right now. The money is unremitted by revenue generating agencies to the coffers of the federal government increased to 4.1 trillion naira as of June 2024. According to the Federation Accounts Allocations Committee, uh, FAAC, or FAC, uh, they stated that this was despite the agency's reconciliation and payment of outstanding debts of 94.96 billion naira in May 2024. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission are significant debtors, owing a combined total of 23.81 uh, million dollars and. 1.94 trillion naira, while other agencies also have substantial unresolved amounts. Kaduna State Finance Commissioner Shizabada expressed concern over the growing debt and urged for expedited uh, reconciliation to resolve the outstanding amounts. Our guest uh, this morning is Mukhtar Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mukhtar. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Mm. Those who are supposed to be making money for the government are not remitting. What do you say about that? I think it just tells us where our problem is. Um, the government has been crying that they don't have enough to do um, a lot of projects. And then they are trying to tax Nigerians and make more, create more avenue for tax. Where they have so much that they've not been able to manage. And I say this is a problem of Nigeria. Um, a country that seems to have so much and then they are not able to guide against leakages. Uh, when you look at, like your report says, when you look at all those um, agencies, you remember, you just realize that they are the cash cow of the Nigeria economy. You look at the Nigerian um, upstream petroleum, petroleum, petroleum regulation, the JC, you look at the Federal Inland Revenue, your authority, you look at um, Nigerian National, National, uh, uh, National Nigeria, <laughs> the NNPC, mm -hmm. and also you look at recently the, Fed, the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals. Uh, recently, the minister was telling us how they are going to remit five million into the Federation account. All these are uh, uh, cash cow for the federal government. Uh, so it's 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 shocking. And uh, from that report, it seems to be reconciling every month, and the debt keep growing up. It keep growing. The reconciliation keep increasing because they are not remitting what they have to. But the good news there is that I think we should give kudos to the um, uh, 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 Nigerian Port Authority that under cash cow. And they are, they, they are not listed among the Nigerian custom, um, customs also are not listed among them. So, but these these orders are really the cash cow of the Nigerian economy, especially the uh, National uh, uh, Nigerian National Petroleum Commission, the NNPC. Well, but I, I don't know. If they don't remit, is it because they don't make the money? Or where does this money go if they do make the money? Well, you know, when it comes to remittance, they tend to tell you that they, they, they incur a lot of overhead costs. I think that has naturally been the problem. They will tell you that um, this, uh, this is not the amount because what you are supposed to remit is after you have removed your overhead costs, like the Nigeria National Petroleum Commission, the NNPC now, you'll be looking at um, maybe they say they have been paying subsidy in one way or the other. I remember that uh, they say maybe of recently the minister for finance came out to say that um, daily we are we are we are paying about we are paying about five hundred and twenty million dollars in terms of importing or refined petroleum products into the country. So that also could be what um, they are saying. Maybe they are also paying that. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. That's what I just think. And uh, maybe they have to do reconciliation on what that before they remit into the federation account. Federal Inland Revenue does the same thing. The uh, Nigerian uh, Petroleum the Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission are, uh, are also are involved in the issuing of um, oil licenses, collecting of royalty. They have a certain percentage and also with overhead costs. So maybe these are the things that they are, they are trying to resolve. But for me, it's taking too long for those things to be resolved. 
Yeah, but they said, uh, the FASC said that um, this was despite the agency's reconciliation and payment of outstanding debts of 94.96 billion naira in May 2024. So it shouldn't be a problem of reconciliation. It shouldn't be a problem of anything else. It should be just remit this money because there's no excuse if this reconciliation has been done already. So where is the problem coming from? Is it, is it, like I say, re, re, reconciliation yeah. is all about, yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, don't worry. Okay, like I say, reconciliation is almost all about overhead costs. I mean, what you are saying that um, they are supposed to reconciliate into the, the, the federation account is their revenue. Can they be tell you that they are not making so much revenue? Because for you to make your revenue, you have to think about your overhead costs. What if impaired and then in terms of every other uh, aspect before you now remit your revenue? It's like a company. If a company wants to give um, uh, a reward for its shareholders, whether in dividend or in terms of uh, uh, um, payment of any kind, they have to also um, make sure that overhead costs, everything, they realize that what they are remitting is actually what, or what do they want to give to their um, um, uh, uh, shareholders actually the true profit of the tax. I think uh, um, that is what is uh, happening here. Uh, that's what I think, you know, they have to, because like you said, in April, um, that's April, you're just talking about April, we still have May, June, July, uh, August, September, <laughs> and um, I mean, we are August, and we might be getting to September, so we have a backlog of that are uh, still being reconciled. So. But again, why I'm not really excited about it is uh, if you look at since President Tinubu came into power, um, they have um, increased in terms of revenue for some of the state governments as they run to Abuja. But again, um, life of the ordinary Nigeria has not been commensurate with the kind of revenue they are receiving. And uh, my only challenge is that if you have so much revenue from your cash card, why, why do we keep borrowing? So that shows that there's a fundamental issues that has to deal with our uh, uh, revenue leakage and remember uh, when this administration came to to power they also were thinking about uh, setting up an agency which would become who would be responsible in the collection of revenue for 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 all agencies instead of having different revenue and going to different places they were trying to and even the president even had a special advice on revenue revenue uh, uh, allocation and mobilization so I, I don't know what they are doing if if that is there and we are still having the kind of challenges that we are having now then it calls for concern uh, my concern now as a layman is that if there are agencies that are supposed to make money for us and they are not making money, instead they are spending more on themselves because that's how I understand it. Why are we keeping them? Yeah, cash cows, um, agency, do you want to do, 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 do it with the uh, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation? But cash cows to, cash cows to who? Who is, who is milking this cow? Uh, who is getting the finance? If the money is not coming to the the, the coffers of the uh, the nation, that should be spent for all other people. So, who is milking this cow and who is keeping this this cash? Well, when you talk about that, like I said, um, it's not that the money is not coming, but they are saying it should be more than that. Uh, you remember we've been on these issues about revenue. With it's not it didn't start with this administration. But we felt that this administration came in and said they are going to block every uh, revenue leakage. So they should be doing better. But we don't have the data of the last administration before now to even know whether they are doing better. But if you look at the numbers that is coming in of recent from this present administration, you see they are doing better. But that also could be relative with the removal of subsidy, um, which um, is bringing more revenue to the states. Um, um, also, no payment of electricity subsidy, um, high cost of living and uh, exchange rate and all that, that could just be the only reason. But in terms of blocking revenue leakage, we have not been able to achieve that. That has been a major problem, not only with this administration. Remember before now, the commissioners, of course, they are still going to Abuja to collect this revenue and kept complaining that the NMPC is, is withholding some of this revenue. And also the National Assembly keep doing the um, overhead function, saying that so X amount of revenue have not been remitted. They will call this agency to the National Assembly but we've not seen any result because the challenge is, is that uh, we are not putting structures in place to guide against this revenue leakage. 
what we tend to do is to play politics with the whole issue, invite them to the House of Assembly, uh, National Assembly, they talk the stories, and then the commissioners comes again, they tell them the same story, and we keep hearing them shouting in the newspaper, but the government have not really come up with structure, like you said. If I'm collecting revenue for any agency in private business, there's a particular unit that that revenue goes to, and immediately that revenue is captured. So we need to begin to do that, and, and, and like I said, when the president came to power, he has a special advisor on revenue allocation and mobilization. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done by that. So that shows that um, maybe they are not really doing their work. What kind of infrastructure is lacking right now? We, we saw the National Assembly trying to probe the NNPCL. As soon as the probe started, NNPCL brought up a figure that the federal government even is owing them. And then after that, we heard of the person who is heading that probe panel uh, being accused of collecting bribe or giving bribe and all that. So that uh, panel has been dissolved now. We, we just can't probe NNPCL. I'm not even talking about other, other ones. We've seen years upon years that NNPCL has remitted zero naira to the coffers because of this overhead cost and all that. A, a, an institution that is not producing whatever, there's no refinery that is working and all that, they're spending so much money and not remitting, except in this administration and maybe the, the end of, uh, towards the end of the last administration that began this remittance. So I, I don't even know. Uh, of what use is it? Why are we not um, uh, privatizing uh, some of these things to make sure that we get our revenue back? We've, told, we've been told that NNPCL is a private business now, but they're still the ones dictating to Nigerians and the oil sector. Whatever they decide is what, when they just sneeze, every, everybody in the oil sector just suffers a cold. Well, um, it's a fundamental problem, like you've said. You're not hearing that from the um, 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 the other, like um, the um, the one in Boni. You you're not hearing that LNG. We are not hearing that from LNG. That LNG is not remitting. LNG uh, LNG is not paying dividend to the government because there's a structure that is put in place whereby it's, it's private sector driven, and what government collects from those sectors are are, are dividends after sales and so those are the type of structure that uh, nmpc is supposed to be running and that's why you have the petroleum industry bill which like you said is supposed to be a private company but when you have a private company where the shareholder of that private company the federal ministry of finance and the uh, and the ministry of petroleum resources then you you are not surprised what you are getting because it's still a government owned parasitors that are it's still in there managing those affairs so for me, I'm not surprised um, because we've not really done the right thing, like you said, being private sector driven. Where we, the, if NMPC is listed, if NMPC is private sector driven, then government that shareholders of NMPC, that means every time NMPC uh, account will be audited and they make sure you give a yearly, a yearly audited statement and it will have to pay shareholders. When it doesn't have to pay shareholders, it has to see reason why he cannot pay shareholders. But I want you to know that the only business NMPC does, and when you say in its balance sheet and its to um, like if they have profit is um, just um, 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 importation of refined petroleum product. Like you rightly pointed out, they are not doing anything different. Um, they are not um, um, they are not producing one liter of refined petroleum product. They sell the crude and bring in refined petroleum product. We've not forgot. We are so Nigerians seem to forget about the mortar issue. Nobody seems to be talking about it today on the news. NMPC is postponing for the sixth time mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Portaco refinery coming on stream. So it shows that a lot of issues and um, that has to deal with um, uh, the fundamentals of our cash cow, which is the NMPC. And I think um, the government has not had the political will to deal with that um, issue because, again, the only way you can deal with it is to create a, 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 a competition whereby NMPC is not a, not the um, sole importer of refined petroleum product or we have local refining of petroleum product. But again, in that aspect, again, NMPC seems to be the king because they are the one that will sell crude to either Dangute refinery or Edo refinery or the local refinery. And they, so they still have a role to play. So a lot of things are not uh, being done properly because I don't think any administration have come with the political will to deal with the issue of NMPC. Today, we still we still started during the time of um, President Oluse Gwabason, where the Ministry of Petroleum is domiciliary in the presidency, and the president becomes the president of Nigeria and the minister of petroleum. That is not even constitutional driven up to this moment. Nobody have seems to come out now. We have minister for state for gas, minister for state for petroleum. 
I mean, it's just it's, it's just not um, um, adding up with all what we are trying to achieve. Until we begin to see transparency, especially in NMPC, then you will never get that kind of revenue. We'll never be out of the wood when it comes to um, revenue because they are still remain the cash cow of Nigeria, and they are, they are they are shareholders, the Ministry of Finance, like I said, and the Ministry of um, uh, of Petroleum. So I think. Um, what we've seen is there's the long and short of it is that there's no political way to deal with NMPC. Oh, okay, but you, you did say uh, LNG, for instance, has a structure that is making them function optimally. Uh, what are some of these things that uh, need to be borrowed from the operations of N LNG uh, to the NNPC so that we can make it work? Well, is that private sector, private sector driven, PPP. How LNG much, how much of the private sector, private sector how much of the private sector do you want involved in that, in NNPC? Look, uh, you see, if you want to run a template like what we see in the LNG, which has been uh, one of Nigeria's most successful PPP partnership within the government, we need to study it. Um, government has no hand in running of uh, the LNG. Government is just solely a shareholder of the LNG. There, there are other shareholders also of that product. And so that means you can see how it works. So if we really want an NPC to work, then we need to look at that template where government itself is just a shareholder. Government is not the one. That, yes, they are part of the of the company, but they are not the one to tell us who the managing director is. They are not the one to constitute the board of the of, of the NMPC. It could be a private sector driven um, type of um, board whereby you have an independence auditor, you have independence executive directors that are coming from other shareholders. So with that, you'll be able to run a transparent organization. You have an organization that is up to date in, in, in terms of revenue to the government, uh, daily, re I mean, um, um, yearly revenue to the government in terms of dividend payment. So we'll not be having a situation where every month you say no NMPC come and remit. So what will happen is that at the end of the year, NMPC tells us the auditor report, this is what we've been able to achieve half year, this is our profit of half year or three months profit, then they remit directly to the federation account after all withholding the taxes or everything are, 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 are removed from it. So it's, it's not rocket science like I keep saying, but I think um, nobody's yet have the political will to deal with this issue. I keep saying that because um, and the problem with Nigeria is we play politics with every aspect of our economy, especially in, 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 in with the oil industry, whereby, it, 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 like I said, I don't know why the president that has so much job to do is still also the, the minister for petroleum. Okay, but can you say the same to, uh, about uh, FIRS? Um, because, um, for instance, in Lagos, it didn't seem to work when it was inside in the hands of government until it was contracted to was it alpha beta or something and the revenue of lagos shot up to a very significant amount do you think that will work that will, that template will work in the national scene as well i'm not support, i'm not in support of that template uh, even in lagos because why was the essence of you having staffs and the staff are virtually doing nothing. So what they have to do is to, to go to Alpha Beta to collect, um, to say, okay, Alpha Beta, how much are you remitting to us? Uh, then what are the staffs doing? I think that's the challenge with the, the federal, in, uh, I think that process was trying to, uh, was, was about to be introduced by the, the then uh, uh, um, director general of that place, uh, I think Fowler, who, who also introduced that template in Lagos, but uh, it didn't work because it made the, the staff redundant and they fought against it. And when you had a new um, uh, um, uh, uh, chairperson of, uh, of uh, Federal he, he, he discarded that, that process because it doesn't make sense for you to have staffs and they are not really doing anything. You are not uh, giving it to a consultant. You are not just giving an aspect of it to a consultant. You are giving fully. It, it tells you how much it makes. It collects its revenue. So, uh, so why can't you? Why can't if you want to do it? Why can't you tell this consultant to come and train your staff on how to to get revenue from the government directly? I don't think it's a, it's something that is is good and it's, it's not good for our economy. If you want to do a private um, sector driven type. It, it has to be in the consultancy level, not in the in the actual revenue collection. I mean, maybe consultancy level in terms of putting on structure, make training of your staff to make sure they are able to collect the revenue at that point. But it, not um, totally um, giving it an, an outside organization the means of collecting revenues. Then why are you as a government um, doing? Uh, so it's all about structure. Yeah, like I said, it's all about the political will to do the right thing.
if that happens, um, it, I, I don't think that will happen in, in the federal um, federal inland revenue um, um, commission because again uh, agency because again with that again you you also need to look at the the, the, the there's a constitutional aspect of that in play um, compared to what the, the state governor can give an order in Lagos State. Maybe the, unless the president will give an executive order uh, for the private sector to begin to collect revenue on behalf of the federal government. Remember that we still have the problem whereby some of these agencies, the revenue they collect, they, people feel that they tax, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are paying what the government paid them. is almost uh, almost as the same as what they are collecting. So um, I don't think it, it, it makes sense to do that. But I think what we need to do is to come up with a structure and let um, have the policy. The federal inland revenue is under the, the control of the Ministry of Finance. And I think they should be able, if um, um, custom um, are not using um, um, external uh, agency to, to collect their revenue, why should federal inland revenue be thinking of that? So I think it's all about having the political will to do the right thing. And like I said, this present administration also have uh, a special advice on, on revenue. Uh, so what is he really doing? What structure is he putting in place? Has he been able to achieve that single revenue drive whereby every revenue finds its way into government? That's why we have the TSC. You know, we seem to forget about the TSC singles, uh, the, 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 the single currency uh, account that government um, created. And that was said to be one of the most transparent way of government collecting revenue. But again, when you look at that TSC, realize that these cash cows that we are complaining about are not members of it they are not uh, part of the TSC. maybe that's the problem so we need to work on that we need to come up with a structure on that uh because i i, I was wondering i was going to ask you whether um, a, a ministry or an agency collecting revenue like that should encourage redundancy. If they, the ministry is not doing anything, we shouldn't be thinking about whether there are staff that are not doing anything because while they are doing something, we are not even seeing anything coming to the coffers. So, but this problem we're talking about, are we talking about the, the, on, the inability to collect these taxes or the... Uh, unavailability of transparency enough for us to see that this revenue that has been collected goes to the coffers of the government because it seems as if the money is being collected but we are not seeing it as we should see it so should we be talking about or should we be blaming it on the training or the capacity of the personnel or we should be blaming it on something else that is making it foggy for us not to be able to see where this money is going instead I don't think it's about capacity. I think it's about transparency. Um, you've hit the nail. It's about transparency. It's not that this, like you said, not that this revenue is not being collected. But again, our transparency, are we in terms of distribution of this revenue? We are not looking at a revenue short for in terms of collection. We are looking at revenue to, to, to short for in terms of distribution. So it, sh it shows that it's not just uh, the capacity to receive, it's the, the ability to also distribute that as when well due. And that has to do with structure. That has to do with um, uh, maybe a lot of administrative buckle neck that have been put in some of these issues like we have said before. There's a lot of administrative challenges when it comes to issues like this. Uh, administrative buckle neck, maybe you need to get approval from the presidency, like I said, and the minister for petroleum is the president. He has to approve all the revenue. May. It's also, I, I, they, they don't tell us what is happening. And that is why, like I keep saying, the, the president said he have a minister for, for, for revenue that is a special advice on revenue that is supposed to make sure that all revenue collecting agency of government are put under one umbrella remember that all revenue should, should be remitted directly into the federation account domicile with the central bank of nigeria that was the the core uh, the, 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 the mandate of this administration but don't forget that the same central bank now is also being accused of not remitting it's not so it's it's all um it's not about confusion everywhere and i think it's all about structure and the political way to put in the right structure in place to make sure we achieve the desired result i think we have not seen any from any administration yet hopefully as this administration goes on they may begin to think of that Okay, I do hope so. Everybody was uh, looking at Tinubu as a person who is very frugal, a person who uh, 
uh, will make sure that the money that is earned by the government goes to the coffers of the government. And we hope that we will get to that point where we'll be seeing the money uh, that uh, uh, we are getting from all these agencies. We'd like to thank you, Mukhtar, for coming on the program and enlightening us on these issues that are a bit foggy to us. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me, Oles. You have a pleasant day. You too. We've been talking to Mukhtar Mohammed, an international finance and economic analyst. Uh, he's based here in Lagos, and we're looking at the fact that uh, some uh, revenue agencies are not remitting money to the coffers, or at least we're not seeing money from these agencies of government that is supposed to make money for us. But that's how we will wrap up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for being a wonderful audience, and on behalf of the entire Breakfast family, on Plus TV. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.